Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I have uh, something a little bit different that uh, I'm going to do. And this may turn into a series. Uh, I've been uh, following a fellow on YouTube for a while. Uh, it goes by the handle Lindy Beige. And he, he talks about all sorts of random things. Uh, he's, he's really good as a presenter. Um, he does most of his stuff in single takes. Uh, and he tends to run off on tangents uh, quite effectively. And by that I mean he, uh, he'll, he'll be on something that's at least related and he'll eventually get back onto his original topic. But he's a really good presenter as these things go. So I invite anyone who's uh, interested in uh, medieval stuff um, and other random things uh, to check out the Lindy Beige channel. I'll try and remember to put a link in the doobly-doo, but I may forget. But if you search YouTube for Lindy Beige, he'll show up. Now, he's been doing a series of videos uh, over the past little while based on a book he found in a uh, sauna or something like that uh, called The Book of Questions. Now, uh, he has, I think, the original edition. Uh, and what he's doing is he's going through the questions in the book in order, starting you know at one and working his way through all hundred and some that are in his book. And I thought, you know, that's a great way to get topics for a discussion. It's uh, something that I can use as a, a launching point for a discussion if I have nothing nothing else that I want to talk about in a given week. So I, I, I went searching for the book of questions and eventually I found it on Amazon. It turns out there's an updated edition. Uh, there's an updated edition. Now, uh, this one is uh, uh, published in 2013. Uh, it's, the, the book is by Gregory Stock, PhD. Uh, and this version it says revised and updated as a, uh, a subtitle on it. Now, it's not a very big book. It, it gets, you know, you can see it's reasonably uh, compact. Uh, and I, I, this, the whole point of it, I guess, is to be a, uh, a set of conversation starters. But it's got a series of questions in it, you know, kind of like they're all set up like that. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is the same thing that Lindy Beige has been doing. And I'm going to start at question number one. Now, this is a different edition of the book. The questions are different, or at least in a different order. And, uh, you know, I think this will be interesting. I'm going to try and go through them in order, starting at number one. Now, maybe I'll, I'll get bored of doing this, but uh, just uh, for reference, there are 291 questions in this edition. Now, I may skip a question here or there if it uh, doesn't seem relevant or I can't give a, any kind of an answer to it or something like that, but I'm going to try and be honest about it and, and give an actual answer to, for each one. So that leaves, uh, leaves me to start the first question. Uh, so this is question number one, and it, it goes, Technology has become a part of us. Would you rather lose the use of all motorized vehicles, all telecommunication devices and computers, or one of your hands? Now that's actually a deeper question than it looks uh, at first glance. Uh, it, it really speaks to how, how much value you place on uh, certain modern conveniences. Now, uh, what would, would I prefer to, to lose the use of? Well, I want to keep both of my hands. My hands are critical to my daily life. I could live with just one hand, but both hands makes life immeasurably better than having just one hand. 
it it uh, pre it allows me to have full dexterity, and it also means that uh, if something does happen later on, I've got still got both hands, right? So I would very much prefer to keep my hands, both of them. So I have to take that one off the table for what would I rather lose the use of. Now, between telecommunications and computers and motorized transport, motorized vehicles, I think, to be perfectly honest, I would very much prefer to keep the motorized transport, the motorized vehicles. Now, why do I say that? Well, motorized vehicles are a significant underpinning of, of industry. And they're actually what allows our population to sustain itself at all. It's what allows for uh, industrial scale operations for farming and so on. Because remember, motorized vehicles includes things like tractors and, and things like that. So motorized transport allows us to do a lot of things. Now, I don't know if this is just on a personal level or take their society as a whole, but on a personal level, uh, I could deal better with having mobility, the motorized vehicles available, and lack of telecommunications, then I would then I can with uh, the telecommunications and no transport. Uh, now it would be healthier if you really get down to it. It would be healthier to for me personally to keep the telecommunications and give up the motorized vehicles. But realistically speaking, if I keep the motorized vehicles, that means that I will maintain my mobility much later in life than I would otherwise. Uh, you might think that walking every day and so on and walking everywhere, which is what you would have to do with no motorized vehicles, walking, uh, bicycles, uh, that sort of thing, uh, or horse carts, whatever, depending on the scale of this, uh, you might think that would be a better proposition for in keeping mobility over time. But keep in mind that your body breaks down over time. As you get older, your, your natural m mobility reduces. The range you can go to on foot and so on drops. If you have motorized vehicles, then you can use things like scooters and so on and, and automobiles to go much further. And you maintain a measure of mobility much, much, much later in life. And that could even lead to extending your life, saving your life, because you can get to uh, medical resources and so on that are much further away. Now, if this this happens uh, to society as a whole, well, yeah, it's uh, the lack of communications could be problematic. But again, the motorized transportation allows for at least um, sent, being able to send letters and that sort of thing from place to place uh, in, in reasonable time. You can actually operate a society without the telecommunications and still have a pretty high level of technology and a pretty high standard of living without the telecommunications. Uh, we could still have, the, if, if we have the motorized transportation, because that's the underpinning of our technological society. It's not, or, or rather our industrial society, it's not the telecommunications that makes all, a, a lot of the stuff that we take for granted possible. Now, obviously, the communications aspect of things is made possible by the telecommunications. But I think if I had to pick one of the three to give up, it would have to be the telecommunications and computers. Because the motorized vehicles 
They do so much more for me that I actually need than the telecommunications does. Sure, if I didn't have the telecommunications computer stuff, I wouldn't have my job. But uh, I think I'd be much better served with the motorized vehicles. Now, I could see uh, a, an argument in the other direction as well. But the question is, uh, which one would I prefer? And while I really like the technology, the telecommunications and computer stuff, it's really, it's a large, it is my life for a large extent. That's what I do for a living. If I had to give up one of them, it would be the telecommunications. I, pr I value my mobility and my ability to get things from a distance far more than my ability to pick up a telephone and talk to somebody or send an email to somebody or to uh, watch videos on YouTube or what have you. And that may be an indicator of my age as much as, as anything. Uh, I grew up without having the internet and a lot of the stuff that we rely on so much today. I grew up without that. Had I grown up even 10 years later, if I was 10 years younger, would my opinion on, on things be different? I suspect it probably would be. But one thing I'm pretty sure of, I would not choose to give up a hand. I, I, I definitely want to keep both of my hands. That there's no doubt about. And I, I can't think of anything that would cause me to choose giving up a hand over the technology, uh, the telecommunications technology or motorized vehicles. So, yeah. So I guess that's that. that. That pretty much answers the question, you know. And and this is how how I expect uh, future videos of this sort to go. Um, and I expect there's going to be some real stumpers uh, upcoming in the book, uh, but uh, I'm going to give it. Uh, I'm going to give it a go. It's something to talk about. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you if you want really want me to go through the the rest of this book, uh, you know, leave a comment or what have you. Uh, if you, for some reason you feel so strongly that I shouldn't leave a comment, uh, you know, let me know. But you know, I think some of these discussions will or these answers will prove to be illuminating or at least interesting. Anyway, uh, that's all for, for this week. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll have another question next week or something else. It'll depend if, if current events uh, inspire me to talk about something else. But for now, uh, if you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. Either one's fine with me. Uh, I don't measure my self-worth by likes or dislikes on YouTube. Uh, in fact, I think it would be immensely amusing to get a video with a few thousand dislikes and no likes on it. Uh, that would be absolutely amusing, and I'm sure I'd take a picture of it and feature it in a video. Uh, and if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications with that, that bell icon that's right beside the subscribe thing. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.